Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and go through the uh, intro to the systems of equations worksheet. So uh, first thing, when we have three methods that we're going to look at. First one is solving by graphing. Um, these aren't all going to be ready to graph. So if we are going to graph them, we have to put them in our slope intercept form. So that's that y equals mx plus b. We graph it. Once we graph the two lines, our solution is going to be where those two lines cross or intersect and where they crossed our answer will be listed as a well x comma y it'll be the point where the two lines cross so we're going to graph them both and wherever those two lines cross that is the intersection second method is substitution so on this one we need to solve for a variable either x equals or y equals Generally, I don't like to use substitution unless this step is already done. So I like to put a little straw on this. If I don't already have an x equals or y equals, I generally would like to use method 3. Um, but still, there are times where substitution might be easier. You might be more comfortable with substitution. So either way, um, I like to go over this. We take this x equals or y equals and we substitute that into the other equation. So we're kind of substituting an equation into equation. And at this point, we have one variable left, so we can solve for that variable, okay? So at the end of this, we should have x equals a number or y equals a number. We have one variable that we've solved. What do we do with this? Well, we take this number and we substitute it into one of the original equations. We substitute that number in and solve it. At this point, we will have both x and y, so make sure you list your answer as a point combinations. Generally, I want the equations to cancel out variables, so they have to be uh, the same number but opposite. And what's required, oh, I already put that down here, it must be the same number, opposite sign. And we get this, this is kind of our first step, um, we get this through if it's not already set up, we get this by multiplying. And then once we're done with that, we can combine and solve. And we really go back to the same steps as the substitution. Once we're solving, we substitute back in. So let's go ahead and go through a couple of these just to, to show you how this works. So on this first one, I'm going to start with graphing. So if I wanted to do graphing, I need both of these equations solved y equals mx plus b. So that x plus y equals negative 5. This is not ready to graph. I need to move the x. So that I get y is equal to negative x minus 5. We can graph them. We have a y-intercept at 0, comma b. There's our b. So 0, negative 5. And our slope is the number with the x, so negative 1, or negative 1 over 1. So from the y-intercept, I go down one right one, down one right one, down one right one, enough to get a good overall sketch of this. Okay. Second equation, we have uh, 4x minus y equals negative 5. Moving the x, I have, don't make this just y, this is negative y equals negative 4x minus 5. And last but not least, we do that by that negative 1 and get y is equal to 4x minus 5. Similar as last time, uh, oh, plus 5, geez. So this 4 becomes positive, this 5 becomes positive. So this has a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of, um, of 0, comma, positive 5 and a slope of 4 or 4 over 1. Problem is, if I go up 4 and over 1, this graph isn't really going towards the other one. So I need to be able to go backwards. I need to be able to go down 4 and back 1, and that's still a positive slope. Down, one, two, three, four, and back, one. It looks like they cross. 
back at this point, which has an x value of negative 2 and a y value of negative 3. But it's hard to tell by the graph, right? And so really we need some algebraic methods to really verify because in real life we're going to have answers that are, are decimals or fractions and complicated. And so we need to be able to use the algebra to get those. So this is the graphing. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to think about well, what if I wanted to use method 2? Method 2 is our substitution. Well, my first step is to get x equals or y equals a number, but we kind of did that already when I solved right here. I got y equals negative x minus 5. So what I can do is I can take the second equation, 4x minus y equals negative 5, and I can put that x minus 5 in place of the other y. So 4x minus all of this substitutes into the other equation. Well, what does that do? Well, this negative distributes. So you get 4x plus x plus 5. Combining like terms, we get, what is that, 5x plus 5 equals 5. Subtracting the 5, we get, oh, I mean, I'm almost making lots of mistakes. This was negative 5 minus 5, so 5x equals negative 10. And dividing by the 5, x equals negative 2. Am I done? No, remember, we need a point. We just found the x value. We need to still find the y value. How do I do that? I take that x, I take that w, and I substitute it into really either equation, but I'm going to go ahead and substitute it into, I don't know, I could, I could put it into this one. I could put it into this one here that we use. Um, but either way, what we get, um, I'll just do one on the top. Negative 2 plus y equals negative 5. Solving for y, we add 2, so that y equals negative 3. Is that our answer? Sort of. Make sure you write your answer as a point, negative 2, comma, negative 3. So that would be substitution, okay? Um, our last method, and I'm kind of running out of room, so I'm just going to squeeze this down here, is going to be um, elimination or combinations. Okay? And this one is actually already set up for elimination or combinations. If I take that x plus y, equals negative 5, and 4x minus y equals negative 5. Then we can solve this. This is ready to combine because those y's are already ready to cancel. We have a positive 1y and a negative 1y. So when I combine, we combine x plus 4x is 5x. Those y's will cancel, and then we have negative 5 minus 5, negative 10, divide by the 5, x equals 2. Am I done at this point? Remember, I still have to, oh, negative 2, geez. Um, I still have to take that and plug it into one of the original equations. We already did that, so it would be that negative 2 plus y equals negative 5, and y equals negative 3. So in all three of these, these are three different methods of just getting the same answer. In all three of these, we got the point negative 2, 3, negative 2, 3, and on this one, we got what? Negative 2, 3. So I want you to see how all three methods work, and I want us to get used to, um, really, this is just three ways of getting the same answer. So that should give you enough to work on two, three, and four. I'm going to now look at five. Two reasons I'm going to look at five, because I want to use substitution, I want to use linear combinations, and I want to start deciding which one's easier, okay? So if I did this question, uh, let's go ahead and say I did it with substitution first. So if I did substitution, I need an x equals or a y equals. I don't have any of that. So I look through these variables here, and I figure out which one of these has a variable easy to get to. 
I think that x is pretty easy. It's at least a 1x, right? So I can get that by itself by just moving the y. And get x equals negative 4y minus 1. That is the hardest part of substitution. Step 2, we take that x equals negative 4 y uh, minus 1, and we substitute that into the other equation in place of the x. Sorry, this is called substitution. So we say 2 times x, 2 times negative 4y minus 1, bring down the rest of the equation, minus y equals 7. This is still 2x minus y equals 7. We have just substituted that negative 4y minus 1 in its place. So now we can distribute that. I'm going to bring this up here. And I have, what is that, negative 8y minus 2 minus the y equals 7. So this is step 3. We substitute or solve. Oh, yeah, this is still step 2. I have negative 9y minus 2 equals 7. Adding the 2, negative 9y equals 9. And dividing y is equal to negative 1. Are we done? Because that was a lot of work, right? But keep in mind, we are not done. That is just a y value. I still need an x value. How do I do that? I take that number and I substitute that. Which of these has an x easier to solve for? I would say that top one, x plus 4y equals negative 1, but this time, in place of the y, we're going to put a negative 1. And now we can solve. So I have x minus 4 equals negative 1. Adding the 4, x is equal to 3. Now we have a point. We have an x and a y. If I were to graph these lines, which I'm not being asked to do, but these lines would cross at 3, comma, negative 1. That is the point. They have in common. Okay? For elimination, what I'm going to do is take these two equations, and I'm going to try to make them cancel. So let's see. 2x minus y equals 7. Here's the problem. Neither of those cancel at this point. If I look at the x's and the y's, that x and 2x would make 3x. Negative 4y minus y would be 3y. They don't cancel. So what I have to do is through multiplication, I have to make one of them cancel. I'm going to choose the y's. Why? Because they're already opposite. One's positive, one's negative. So if they were only both a 4, we could cancel them out, right? So how do I make it a 4? Take the bottom equation and multiply it all times 4. That makes that 8x minus 4y equals 28. Bring down the other equation, x plus 4y equals negative 1. This is now set up to eliminate. The y's now can cancel. 8x plus x is 9x. 28 minus 1 is 27. Dividing by the 9, x equals 3. Are we done? No, we still have to plug that in. So I go to that top equation, 3 plus 4y. That should be a 4y. Equals negative 1. So we put that in place of the x. Now it's just a two-step equation. Subtracting the 3. 4y equals negative 4. We subtracted 3 on both sides. That was not division. Don't get confused by that. So we subtracted the 3 on both sides. 4y equals negative 4. Dividing by the 4, y equals negative 1. So what is my answer here? How about 3, negative 1? Two ways of getting the same answer. You need to be comfortable with both because sometimes one is easier than the other. And but hopefully by the end of this, you can kind of see that. And then basically past this assignment, you really should be able to choose which method you want to use and why. Um, I'm not going to make you do all three on a test. 
but I want you to practice multiple methods on here so that you can see sometimes one is easier than the other. So um, I've done two. Um, that does leave you with really what, 11, 12, 13, 14. That leaves you with 12 more. These last ones are not very hard to solve. Just make sure you verify your method and you solve it. Um, feel free to use additional resources or message me if you have any questions on this. Uh, but hopefully this was helpful and uh, good luck.